and welcome back to the sideboard here at Star City Games St. Louis. My name is Ruben Bressler and I'm joined by Devin Chu. Now Devin, you appeared on camera earlier and uh, we were having a lot of fun watching this deck. <laughs> this deck looks like uh, just a blast to play. Um, so tell us a little bit about where this red, white, black, mid-range life gain monster came from. Well, uh, first of all, it seemed really like a well positioned right now, and I based it off of Frank Lepore's deck. For sure. Yeah, Frank Lepore. And my brother played it for a while, so it was pretty good. And uh, I really wanted to play a Pillar of Flame and, like, a uh, Sire Sandy after that to fight the control decks at the same time. Because, yeah. Sure, yeah. Pillar of Flame is one of the cards we were talking about as being extremely potent in this current metagame. Because yeah, uh, Junk Aristocrats won last week. Uh, Pillar of Flame, one of the more powerful cards against that strategy. Now, you just have a metric ton of life gain <laughs> in this deck. Uh, with your Near Hearth Pilgrims, Rocks, Faith Mender, and both Blood Baron and Obzidot in the same deck together. Which usually people are like, choose one or choose the other. Yeah. Um, uh, is this much life gain necessary? I mean, has it has it um, has it has it been too much for you today, or is it the right amount? It's sort of the right amount, but it's funny because uh, I actually didn't play on like Rock Spike Bender at all. Because right before the tournament started, I had like missiles. Sure. And uh, my friend Matt, he just said to cut all the lightning missiles because I really wanted to play a bunch of resting pieces. Sure. So we added one main board resting piece and two Rock Spike Benders. Yeah, that was going to be one of my other questions is, you know, you look at a black-white mid-range deck, doesn't matter what the third color is, you almost expect, like, assume there's going to be at least three Lingering Souls, and there's no Lingering Souls, especially when you're running Liliana of the Veil, which you are uh, very good with Blasphemous Act, also to yeah. lower the price. Um, but you're not, because you, you want to utilize the power of Rest in Peace, of which yes. you're running one main deck. Uh, and so that's that's mostly for things like aristocrats, but also has a little bit of splash damage against yeah. like the blue white red flash decks. Or like the uh, Naya decks right now, they were at Striker Geist and Voice. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, being able to take yeah, out Rancor. the trigger on both of those. Oh, and Rancor as well. Yeah, excellent. So uh, this is just a bunch of heavy hitters in the main deck. One of the uh, interactions that I wanted to point out was Near Hearth Pilgrim Soul Bonding with Boros Reckoner. Yeah, that is nuts. Is, like, is an absolute house. So the way that that would work is you give your Boros Reckoner lifelink, uh, and that allows it to, all the damage that it takes, it gets to redirect, like, like Boros Reckoner does. So you gain that life, plus the three damage that it gets for itself. Plus, if you just so happen to have Blasphemous Act, yeah. then you gain 13 and deal 13 also. 20 point, 26 point life swings usually enough to get there. Um, and you, you've also got a, a slightly less played card, I guess, War Leader's Helix, yes. um, as, as one of your targeted elimination spells, really for being able to take things out at instant speed that are relatively big. Uh, that, that's the way you're going. Why, why did you decide to go with that War Leader's uh, Helix? To be honest, War Leader's Helix really isn't that good on like turn four or anywhere earlier. It's really good in the late game. Say I have like a Rock Spit Thunder or I'm trying to gain life and try to maybe pump my Blood Baron. Sure. But like, uh, if they play like a Sire or uh, anything like a Resto. Sure. Being able to really take good. out the, the four toughness guys like, like yeah. Sire of Intanity is very. I mean, it's not very good against your deck, but oh, yeah. them having a Crawl Worm is still a problem most yeah. of the time. And it's uh, if you want to try to activate your Blood Barons and get it up to. Uh, <laughs> Uh, divinity of Pride size, you can do worse than have War Leaders yeah. here. This deck seems tailor made to get Blood Baron up to 10 10. Have you had it as a 10 10 yet? Not. You have not? Yeah, it's got to be. <laughs> it's still pretty difficult to do, even if you have this much life gain and this much damage. 30 is actually damage. pretty easy, just actually getting them under 10 at the same time. Sure, sure. So let's take a quick look at the sideboard here. Um, again, we've, we've got our full amount of rest in pieces, which you decided was a very important part to being in this metagame, which, uh, taking out things like uh, Voice of Resurgence, you have the four pillars and the four rest in peace. Yeah, I honestly couldn't play my own voices, because, yeah. Sure. And uh, I just wanted to wreck other people's voices. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, it's it's one of the most popular cards in standard right now. Yeah. Played in like four of the top five most popular yeah. decks, so uh, definitely a good choice. You've got additional uh, Sin Collector, additional Lil Liliana for like the control matchups. Yeah. Another one I wanted to point out is Assemble the Legion, which sort of fell out of popularity once uh, Acidic Slime was the top dog in the format. Yeah. But now Acidic Slime's really gone. Yeah. So you can play your Assemble the Legions now. Yeah, Dark um, Reanimator isn't really that popular anymore. It's still a tier one deck, but I I think Assemble the Legions are really good. 
Sure. Uh, is there any, any interactions that, I, that I'm missing that I should talk about or, or some cards that come in from the sideboard? You'll also look very good against uh, Ban Hexproof, which yeah. is a deck that, uh, that has been very popular in this room. Yeah. There's a lot more than I expected, at least twice as much. And you, after sideboard, you've got Tribute to Hunger, Devour Flesh, and Liliana. Yeah. So you've got just so many Edict effects, not to mention the fact that you've still got Blasphemous Act and Overload Mizium Orders every once in a while. Uh, yeah, that's 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 a lot. So, were, were you were you planning ahead for the the band matchup? The band uh, expert yeah, matchup. Yeah, before I was actually uh, playing this deck, I actually played band expert. Sure. And uh, so you're just wary know. of it. Yeah, I just hated the sacrificing refugees. Sure. So moving forward, uh, you said you were unhappy with a couple of cards, ha very happy with some of the cards. What would you change about this if you were to play it in this tournament again or going forward to next week? Um, I don't know what I, exactly what I've got, but I would actually try to add another Blasphemous Act. Uh, sometimes the Warmedia Salix and the Rizzi Mortis, the 4 damage just doesn't get there. Like, I just uh, lost a Thunderball Hellkite. Sure. Duel. Yeah, being able to take down Thunderball Hellkite, not the easiest thing to do with Warmedia Salix. You kind of need the extra tragic slip, which is not really what you want to be doing. Um, so yeah, another Blasphemous Act. Plus the combo with Boros Reckoner has been very popular in standard. So this deck looks like a ton of fun to play. Um, just, if you want to gain a bunch of life, if you want to make a 10-10 Blood Baron, I think this is the deck. I don't think there's a better deck for doing that. So, uh, yeah, and this looks, this looks great. Good luck going forward. Thank you for having, for, uh, for being in the sideboard. This is, uh, Devin Chu, uh, local from around here about 20 minutes away, here at Star City Games St. Louis, here in the sideboard.